Hello everyone and welcome back to Virginia International University's MBA 605 auditing course. In this section which covers chapter 25 of the text we want to talk about the other assurance type services that are offered to the investor to the to the public by certified or by, by CPAs. Um, we've covered a lot of time this semester really focused on the audit of financial statements and we said early on that audits were a subpart of attestation services and that along with these audits are um, assurance services which are just other attestation services that are not as um, complete as an audit. So we want to cover and talk about a little bit of those in this sec section. So what we'll talk about is understanding the level of assurance and evidence requirements for review and compilation services, which are like audits, but they're not audits, and there are some very distinct and important differences, particularly with respect to the legal liability of the CPA. We want to describe some special engagements to review interim financial information for public companies, and we want to distinguish the AICPA attestation standards from auditing standards and know the type of engagements to which they apply. Further, we want to understand the nature of web trust and sys trust assurance services, which are really um, internet-based um, services offered by CPA firms. We want to describe engagements to report on internal controls at service organizations, and so we'll want to talk a little bit about, well, what is a service organization? And then we'll want to understand special engagements to attest to prospective financial statements. Finally, we'll talk about degree define, we'll talk about and define agreed upon procedures engagements and we'll describe other audit and limited assurance engagements related to historical financial statements. So we're going to cover a lot here as you can see that are um, not related to audits um, and it's not an audit in the sense of what we've talked about as an audit, but they are services offered by the CPA firm to the public. So the standards uh, for accounting and review services are developed by a committee which has authority equivalent to the Accounting Standards Board for services involving unaudited financial statements of non-public companies. So, since review and compilation services provide less assurance than audits, the accountant should establish an understanding with the client about the services to be provided through a written engagement letter, just like an audit. And so, what we, and what we see with this graph is the relationship between the level of assurance attained, that is, is there, uh, is this a compilation and so no assurance is provided? Is it a review and so some level, limited level of assurance is provided? Or is this an audit where there's a high level of assurance attained? And um, then with respect to each of those levels of assurance, we can see going across the y-axis how much evidence we have to accumulate and so the higher the level of assurance that is an audit, the more extensive the amount of evidence accumulated is required to support the audit opinion as we discussed this semester. So review services are an engagement designed to allow the accountant to express limited assurance that the financial statements are in accordance with applicable accounting standards. So the procedures suggested for reviews include that the accountant can study AICPA industry guidelines or other sources to obtain industry knowledge. The level of knowledge about the client should be less than the amount of knowledge for an audit. However, the information should be about the nature of the client's business, its accounting records, and the principles and practices used by the accountant or by the client. Management inquiries should include a description of procedures for recording, classifying, and summarizing transactions. The auditor should inquire into actions taken at meetings of stockholders and the board of direction, directors, and it should ask, ask if each account on the financial statements was prepared in conformity with fraud. They should also confirm whether management has any knowledge of the actual or suspected fraud. And this figure shows the, um, an example of a review report. 
And um, as you can see in paragraph three, the report states that our responsibility is to conduct the review in accordance with the statements on standards for accounting and review services. This is different from what's stated in the audit report. Um, it, it further elaborates that those standards require us to perform procedures to obtain limited assurance that there are no material modifications that should be made to the financial statements. We believe that the results of our procedures provide a reasonable basis for our report. Then the fourth paragraph goes on to say that based on our review, we are not aware of any material modifications that should be made to the accompanying financial statements in order for them to be in conformity with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. And so what we call that paragraph is negative assurance. We're saying that we're not aware of any material modifications that should be made. That's an example of negative assurance. Compilation services are defined as one in which the accountants prepare and present to a client or third party financial statements that are based on the information obtained from the client. The CPA firm does not express any assurance on the statements and so keep in mind again a review and a compilation are not audits. The level of assurance provided for a review is much less than the level of assurance provided in an audit and there is no level of assurance provided as a result of a compilation. A written engagement letter should be used to document the objectives of the engagement type and limitations of the service to be provided and a description of the report. Know the client including the nature of its business transactions, accounting records, and content of its financial statements. And so for a compilation, what the uh, CPA firm is required to do is to determine whether the client's information is satisfactory and then review the compiled financial statements for any obvious omissions or errors in math and gap. A compilation report can take three forms. Full disclosure, which is the same as gap statements or some other accounting standard. No disclosure reports are typically used for management purposes, so that is there are no notes or other financial presentations to go along with the financial statements. Or when this compilation without the independence is when the accountant lacks independence, an additional paragraph must be added as the last paragraph of the report. So again, we have three different forms of compilation reports, full disclosure, no disclosure, compilation without independence. And here we see the form of a compilation report. And um, the important uh, point to make here is that last paragraph where we state that our responsibility is to conduct the compilation in accordance with statements on standards for accounting and review services issued by the AICPA. The objective of the compilation is to assist management in presenting financial information in the form of financial statements without undertaking to obtain or provide any assurance and that there are no material modifications that should be made to the financial statements. Um, also an important point is that um, in the first paragraph where we are very clear as auditors and accountants that we have not audited or reviewed the accompanying financial statements and accordingly do not express an opinion or provide any assurance about whether the financial statements are in accordance with the accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. And so we're very clear that we are not expressing an opinion on the adequacy of the financial statements or whether they are um, fairly present or reflect the results of operations. And that's a big difference between a compilation report, a review report, and an audit opinion. So if we're issuing a compilation report without disclosures, the first three paragraphs remain the same. However, we add a second pair or another paragraph that states management has elected to omit substantially all of the disclosures and the statement of cash flow is required by principles generally accepted in the U.S. So, and finally, we finally, we state that accordingly the financial statements are not designated for those who are not informed about such matters. So it's important when we are um, conducting a review of interim financial information for public companies that um, we have um, 
to uh, commit to five requirements for review service levels, and that includes industry knowledge, client knowledge, inquiries of management, pro forma analytical procedures, and to obtain a management rep letter. And so again, when we're performing a review of interim financial information for public companies, we are um, not providing a basis for expressing a positive form opinion. The review is conducted according to the standards of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, and there is no reference to the SARS in the review report. So again, this is when we're reviewing interim financial information on public companies. And so the AICPA has issued 11 attestation standards that parallel the 10 generally accepted auditing standards. To provide additional guidance for doing attestation engagements, the Auditing Standards Board of the AICPA issues statements on standards for attestation engagements, or SSAEs. In general, auditing standards apply to attestations that deal with providing assurance on historical financial statements, including one or more parts of those financial statements. The ASB decided not to attempt to define the potential boundaries of attestation engagements except in conceptual terms because new services are likely to rely, arise. Three levels of service are examinations, reviews, and agreed upon procedures. An examination results in a positive conclusion. A review provides a negative assurance conclusion that nothing came to the CPA's attention that the assertions are not presented in all material respects in conformity with the applicable criteria, and in an agreed-upon procedures engagement, all procedures the CPA will perform are agreed upon by the CPA, the responsible party for making the assertions, and the specific persons who are the intended users of the report. And so in this figure, we see the type of engagement, whether it's an examination, a review, or an agreed upon procedure. And we see the um, nuances that that type of engagement has for either the amount of evidence that are collected, the level of assurance that is provided, the form of conclusion that is provided, and then the distribution of the report itself. So these are really important differences. It would, um, you know, you really need to understand these because, again, um, these um, differences have implications for the legal liability of the auditor, and they're a big part of the CPA exam. So the Web Trust Service is a specific service developed under the broader Trust Services principle and criteria jointly issued by the AICPA and the CICA. The CPA firm assesses whether the company's website complies with the five trust services principles. So this is really for um, companies who want to have some sort of an independent evaluation of their web service performed, particularly retailers. And then you've probably seen this in some websites you've gone into that they'll have um, um, a small icon that uh, says Web Trust or AICPA. Um, uh, audited and um, it lends more credibility and integrity to that site. So here we see what the five trust services principles are that were referred to um, previously under the web trust services and we the principles are around security, availability, processing integrity, privacy and confidentiality and what this says is that as a result of the um, services provided by the CPA firm, the CPA firm is able to say whether the entity discloses and maintains compliance with its, and then we go down for each of these principles and um, see what's been reviewed and tested as a part of the web trust services provided. And so in a CIS trust engagement, the CPA firm, licensed CPA, evaluates a company's computer system, including trust services, that is, their web services, um, according to principles and criteria. The service provides assurance to management, directors, or third parties about the reliability of information systems used to generate real-time information. In 
increasingly we see where organizations have outsourced to third parties some of the um, uh, different services, whether they outsource their information systems, they may have outsourced their accounting process. Um, they're increasingly, they out, uh, we do see organizations outsourcing, particularly now with cloud computing on the rise. Um, we see serv organizations outsourcing these. Well, these outsourcing services provide information. It could be financial information. It could be um, peripheral information. But they provide information that um, we often want to have some sort of uh, review of in order to understand the integrity around that information. And these outsourcing agencies are called service organizations. And so we will engage CPA firms to um, perform reviews of these service organizations and issue reports on them. Um, they are These reports may be one of two types. A type 1, which report on the design of controls at these service organizations, and then type 2, which report on the effectiveness or the operating effectiveness of these controls. Forecasts are prospective financial statements that present an entity's expected financial position, operating results, and cash flows. Projections are prospective financial statements that present an entity's financial position, operating results, and cash flows to the best of the responsible party's knowledge and belief, given one or more hypothetical assumptions. Prospective financial statements are prepared for one of two audiences, general use statements for any third party and limited use statements solely for third parties with whom the responsible party is dealing with. Types of engagements on these statements include an examination, a compilation, or an agreed upon procedures engagement. With respect to these examinations of prospective financial statements, AICPA attestation standards clearly state that CPAs are not attesting to the accuracy of the prospective financial statements. Instead, they examine the underlying assumptions and the preparation and presentation of the forecast or projection. For examination, there are four elements. That is, we evaluate the preparation of the prospective financial statements, the support for underlying assumptions in these statements, we evaluate the presentation for conformity with AICPA guidelines, and then we're um, issuing an examination report. And so for agreed upon procedures engagements, the audit is limited to certain specific audit procedures that are agreed to between the parties. These are referred to as procedures and findings engagements. The SASs deal with financial statement items where the SA, I'm sorry, the SSAEs deal with non-financial statement matters. So again, we have very different um, uh, criteria here when we're engaged to perform an agreed upon procedures engagement versus an audit versus a compilation versus a review. With cash basis accounting, only cash receipts and disbursements are recorded. Under modified cash basis, the cash basis is followed except for certain items such as fixed assets and depreciation. Common examples of the regulatory agency basis include the uniform system of accounts required of railroads, utilities, and some insurance companies. Tax basis uses the same measurement rules used for filing tax returns even though tax rules are not GAAP. An example of a definitive set of criteria is the price level basis of accounting. And so these are just um, examples of other comprehensive basis of accounting that an AICPA that are um, overseen by the AICPA and that a CPA firm may be engaged to perform. So auditors are often asked to audit and issue reports on specific aspects of financial statements. This is a, a common example is a report on the audit of sales of a retail store in a shopping center to be used as the basis for rent payments. There are two differences in these types of audits. Materiality is defined by the item audited and gas does not apply. And so materiality is really defined in terms of the elements accounts or items being audited rather than for the overall statements. The effect is to require more evidence than if the item is being verified as one of many parts of a statement. 
So the, and finally, the first standard of reporting under generally accepted auditing standards does not apply because the presentation of elements, accounts, or terms is not a financial statement prepared in accordance with applicable accounting standards. Auditors may issue reports on debt compliance and similar engagements as separate reports or by adding a paragraph after the opinion paragraph as part of the report that expresses their opinion on the financial statements. And then finally, with respect to debt compliance letters and similar reports, the auditor's opinion is in the form of a negative assurance stating that nothing came to the auditor's attention that would lead the auditor to believe there was non-compliance. And so this com concludes our discussion of Chapter 25 on other assurance services. Um, I think that you can get a good appreciation of um, the um, variety of services that uh, CPA firms are able to offer even outside the audit it, with respect to attestation services, although there are clearly uh, differences in standards and clearly differences in expectations with respect to all of these services. So please go back and read the chapter. Don't let this presentation substitute as a reading for that. And um, I thank you for your time and attention today.